is Arlene. Hi, this is Gauri. And we have uh, someone else joining us this morning. Not someone, some <laughs> two, some <guy. laughs> two people. Hi, Jer- this is Fazli. I'm back. Hello, this is Grace. And today we are going to discuss uh, a topic that uh, all women and men also are facing. What is it, Gauri? It is sexual harassment, which is uh, pretty universal. Uh, like you said, everyone uh, go through it at some point of their lives, whether they want to or not. And uh, it happens. It can happen at home. It can happen at work. It can happen in public places, pretty much anywhere at all. Mm-hmm. And there uh, is a campaign that's that's happening right now that you were telling me earlier about oh, Ntikan uh, Rogol. Yeah, Ntikan Rogol is not necess- It's not really a sexual harassment campaign. It's more like a anti. Uh, stop rape. It's focused on uh, on rape. On it? rape, the issue of rape, because uh, apparently in Malaysia the the rape cases are actually quite high, mm. and uh, a lot of people do not have the awareness about rape, and a lot of victims of rape they usually would self blame themselves, thinking that oh it's my fault because I wear too sexy or I was in that dark alley where I shouldn't be or I didn't listen to my mom I should have like stay in the house you know like they blame themselves or I shouldn't have uh, be too nice to him that's why he he thought that I'm I, I, I want it you know um, a lot of the time victims will blame themselves and it's very surprising that there's been a this huge campaign nationwide as well regarding rape and countless of posts on Facebook on Twitter saying that you know when when rape happens it's no one's fault it's the rapist's fault you know no one is asking for it uh, even whether you're dressed uh, provocatively, even if you're walking around naked, you're still not asking for it. Um, people are still not allowed to touch you if 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 you if you don't want it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that if you're walking around naked, you're asking for it. But despite all these numerous campaigns, there are still a lot of people out there who think that, you know, it's your fault. Uh, who asked you to dress like that? Like you said earlier, like who asked you to? go out so late at night or, or to walk in this dark alley and the mindset still hasn't changed among a lot of people mm-hmm. but in South Korean how how South Korean women and men see rape is it something that is acceptable less in like uh, something that people would blame the victim rather than blame the harasser or the rapist it is not acceptable. <laughs> yes, we Koreans we are quite conservative, and um, the the part of uh, part about the raping is it's both parties. You see, so, so we society we do uh, blame the the one who actually causes it. So sometimes we do blame the the victims, but uh, there are cases that um, the rape cases happens to the kids, like girls, school girls, and then that's when the society gets really angry about By it. By pedophile, is it? Pardon? Yes, yes. And um, they just get uh, kidnapped first, and then disappear for a few days, and after that um, they get killed after after rape. Mm-hmm. So we're pretty much against the rape as well in uh, in our country. Mm-hmm. And uh, coming from, uh, we have, I guess we have a little uh, male perspective for today. Uh, what do you think, Fazli, when people say that uh, when girls dress uh, wearing a miniskirt or a tank top, she's showing off too much skin, so she obviously wants it. What, what do you think of that kind of mentality? Okay, to that kind of mentality, I ask everyone to remember Nurin Jaslin. Mm-hmm. She was a little girl. She was not dressed provocatively. She just wa- she just wanted to go to store to buy some ribbons, if I remember correctly. Was she asking for it? Of course not. And it's the same with any other women. So, rape is wrong, full stop. And the blame lies solely on the perpetrator, not not the victim. And there's another thing that I wanted to uh, bring up because uh, being an Indian uh, and a uh, Hindu. Uh, we have we celebrate uh, Taipusam every year, and it's especially really big in Penang. And uh, every time before we we get out of the house, uh, I have my dad and uh, my relatives telling me that, uh, you know, your sari blouse should not be too low because if it's low, then any guy can just you know touch you while he's walking past you, and and it's your fault. And it's your fault because your sari blouse is too low. And of course, I'm totally against that, but. 
uh, I'm pretty upset that, that, that they actually feel like it's the girl's fault and it's not the guy. You know, instead of telling the guy, don't touch that girl, they tell the girl, you know, don't sew your sari blouse too low because then the guy will touch you and, and it's your fault because you're exposing your skin. Mm-hmm. I, I totally disagree that uh, a woman's body is a, 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 a ticket a, or a green light for men to rape women. I think you can dress in any any kind of clothes you like you can be even you can even be nude but to me you any man or woman should know how to control themselves that that's i mean it's it's just the way it is and i want to highlight a few cases where rape has been highlighted but people has not getting has, has not gotten the awareness that rape is something wrong and the perpetrator should be the ones being blamed uh, the few cases that I think the infamous gang rape in Kelantan mm-hmm. where two girls were gang raped in a secluded house uh, by 38 men, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. And um, nobody condemned that as much as they condemn the issue related to, uh, at that time was the story of the Cadbury, the Cadbury yeah. uh, with the pig's DNA, which I found it to be very, very confusing that people just you know kept quiet about it and the second story is about the six soldiers reminded over the alleged rape of a child just a minor in Johor and the third case is the 13 year old girl reportedly raped then assaulted by the alleged rapist's wife in fact it's funny uh, like like w- people don't see that rape is wrong even the wife of the rapist assault the girl herself for you know hey why are you seducing my husband when the husband her husband uh, himself was the one committing it and uh, also uh, going back to that when uh, coming up with a solution our government tend to come up with things like you know be more careful uh, don't reveal too much or don't go out late at night don't walk in dark places but I'm sure you'll agree that that is not the long-term solution to this problem. And that is, I wouldn't even agree for that to be a temporary solution because in, at the end of the day, it has to go back to the person who is actually causing it, like you said, the perpetrator of, of the issue. And it's not supposed to be what the victim can do about it. Do you, do you guys have any thoughts on this? Well, all these uh, methods by the government, like you shouldn't go out, you should wear something more um, not non-revealing clothes. It's actually they call it the protectionist approach. Mm-hmm. In fact, the protectionist afford, approach is good for a very very short term sort of like uh, affirmative action, but not in the long run. In the long run, the government should provide uh, should ensure that you know all public and private spaces are safe for women or men or even children to go around. In fact, in some countries in very, very developed areas, for example, Scandinavia, you can be a woman, you can walk in that, uh, sorry, in dark alleys alone and you will feel safe because you know the law, the mm. people, the society will protect you. What about the men's view on this? Uh, it's, it's, I think it's one thing to do with you is to change the perception of it i mean still a lot of men is there is a general perception that men mm. i don't know why but there's this prevailing view that men are like uncontrollable animals do you agree with that of course not <laughs> but, but there's there's still this perception that because because women are because women dress provocatively so you you cannot expect the men not to pounce, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was even uh, a, a saying a few a few years back, I think, where someone said that when you leave when you leave a meat out in, in, in the in the street, oh you yeah, can't, it was in Australia, right? I think so. Well, there's yeah. one uh, imam mm. that uh, sort of depicted women as an exposed meat, mm, and uh, and you can't expect the cats to come. Well, I I think considering that. We've we've evolved enough to be uh, to to draft laws, build the civilizations. I think we're evolved enough to be able to control our baser urges, but mm-hmm. obviously that's not always true of some cases. But even then, still, there's still this whole culture of blaming the victims, mm-hmm. which she deserved it. She prov- mm-hmm. she provoked she provoked the uh, the perpetrators. So I mean, that in particular has to change. And one way to do that, I think, is still in education so yeah bring yeah, up the sex I ed I agree with it 
Yeah. What 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 do you have to say on this, Grace? Because education is important, not just about learning, but also, like you know, make people aware what's going on and what 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 can cause it and what's outcome of it. Do you learn about um? Uh, do you learn about this kind of things like uh, uh what is rape, what is sexual harassment well, in the school? The education system in, uh, in 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 school has improved, has changed a lot more than before. So in this uh in this part area, we learn a lot more what we need to do and how do we take care of ourselves outside. And also the government has installed like CCTV in public places. So even if we got out at night, we still feel safe mm -hmm. walking around. But um, there are still like no CCTV watching us what will happen. So they can actually catch all those uh, places if that uh, something happens mm -hmm. so and also it's really important how one creates a culture itself you mm -hmm. see like when uh, the government or one organization comes up with an idea it's the victim's fault you know the one has to dress properly and so on it, that itself creates the culture itself and the people say yeah that's the victim's fault mm -hmm. whereas it could be the uh, otherwise you see so education uh, creating culture is very important mm -hmm. another one point that I want to highlight is the rape culture in our modern society I mean you 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 just watch the television or the internet it seems like uh, the media is perpetrating the idea or even in films and arts is perpetrating the idea that rape is not it's not something that is wrong. I mean, it's something that is, uh, it happens and it is, um, and men derive p pleasure from that. What do you think about this? There is a pornography huh? that about raping yourself. I think it's quite famous in Japan. Where, what is it called? Uh, um, I forgot what it is. But yes, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's norm, but it's one of the category. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, only 18 above, um, Honestly, they can access to that uh, particular category. So it has become almost a part of their culture to mm. watch that particular category as mm. well. Yeah. What is your view? Uh, I think that rape as a culture is definitely something that is not acceptable. But because uh, people, uh, because it's happened so much, and some people just tend to just brush it off. You know, when you see a news about somebody raping someone, you're just like, oh. There you go again, another rape case. But do you think porn, such a do, do, do you think the porn industry as well as you know like uh, films and movies and arts in this modern world, mm -hmm. especially from Hollywood, perpetuating the rape culture, or is it you do you think it's something beyond just that? I definitely would not think that uh, it's the movies and all that's uh, perpetuating this culture. I think that. It goes back to the ment people's mentality itself because when you're watching something, it do it doesn't always mean that it's going to uh, make people uh, head in that direction. For example, when people uh, say that, oh, if you grow up watching uh, WWE or WWF, you're bound to be violent, but that is very uh, a, a bit stereotypical because I used to uh, get that all the time. <laughs> 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 well, speaking of that, I I used to get that all the time too, but. I don't think that I turn out to be, you know, a violent, Fine, aggressive yeah. person. Yeah, I'm still this uh, soft, <laughs> curly girl. Um, but yeah, like just like that. I th I think that you can you can watch porn, which like Ray said, which is which has the rape subcategory. It can be your favorite kind of porn to watch. Or, yeah. but you know, it it goes back to how how you execute it. If you are really into that kind of thing, you know, you could always get a girlfriend and and have a, a consensual uh, whatever role playing thing. It's also thing part of her. psychology part where they play with the people's mind like you know or in terms of pleasure mm -hmm. and then desire. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a blurred line between fantasy as well as, rea as, well as reality but mm -hmm. what do you have to say on this? Um, I got nothing, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is just, I'm just... Um, do you, what, what do you think is perpetrating the rape culture in our today's society? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, because of the film industry or the porn industry or is it be beyond more than just that? I think it's in it. It's just more in in, in it cu cultural tradition, you see. I mean, women are supposed to be... So, I mean dress modestly that kind of, that kind of thing especially if you go to if you go to kampung kampung sites rural more rural areas less uh, uh, where 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 people are more traditional 
So, I mean, even in cities, you still, I guess there's still a pre- underlying prevailing sense in that. So, that's why the... So that's why when you hear about a, a, a woman getting raped, it's more than likely some, some, someone's going to think that somehow she must have done something to deserve it, mm-hmm. and uh, that's and that's the underlying and that's and that's the part that you, you know we have to stamp out. You see, that's mm-hmm. the part that's got that's got to go. And also, as much as there are like an anti-rap campaigns going on, like Gary said, people have become quite ignorant to all this news because there are so many cases, so many cases, not only in Malaysia, but around the world. So people have, you know, just, oh, it's another case. And they just pass on after that. Yeah, yeah I think it's our, what you call here, the tida apa attitude that we Malaysians tend to have. And whatever that whatever law that we have right now is obviously not effective enough to prevent these people because they, it's still happening. You know, I thought that after the 38 guys raping the girl, you know that that this issue will be highlighted more, that that people will get more scared or whatever. But that's not happening. There's still news every day about about uh, girls, ladies, even little kids getting raped. It's obviously uh, not working, and mm. it. There should definitely be a heftier punishment to these people. I think I agree with Grace. Education is the key in this because I, as, as far as I know, when when I studied in high school, in primary school, even in university, I I was I was not exposed in terms of information about sexual harassment, rape, and all this. Uh, uh, you know crimes and to me uh, to me to me the, the the prevailing message is you have to dress modestly you should not go out at night and you should make sure that you know you have your own uh, self protection as in like learn martial arts mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know uh, bringing uh, yeah. pepper spray and all that but to me that's not the real solution that might be a good affirmative action for a short while but not a, for the long term and I, I like what is being uh, shared in the women's NGO as well as in particular with the WAO which is the women's um, og- uh, by the women's organization women's AIDS organization sorry they actually created infographics to show that how to know that if you are raped and what you should do to help out and who should you call and what are the myths of rapes and I think this is and where you can go and get your support group when you after you know you are being faced by this sort of crime and I think it's important for all women and men to know that of course and uh, also uh, speaking of uh, sexual harassment I just want to talk a little bit about uh, non-rape uh, instances like for example uh when a guy uh, comes up to you and touches you, uh, it could be the other way around. Not not necessarily a guy touching a girl. Even if a girl is is touching a guy without um uh, without the consent of the other party, that is already considered as sexual harassment. And most people are also keeping quiet about that because it's usually a case of uh of authority where someone of a of a higher uh a stature yeah. Uh, imposing it on you and you cannot really do anything about it because there are a lot of factors to consider mm-hmm. yeah that, that that part is pretty interesting to understand but another another I guess I would say topic that people don't like to highlight both men and women would be men getting raped by another man I guess that happens a lot uh, in in prisons, in in jail, where uh, that's the main reason that men are afraid to to go to jail. And I found this really interesting quote that said, uh, what men fear of going to jail is the same thing that every woman fears when she's walking down the street. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, at least men, uh, according to that, that, that quote, don't have to worry about it until they go to prison. But women are constantly uh, worrying no matter where they are, you know, because whether they're walking alone or even uh, anywhere at all. It, it, it just it can happen anywhere, anytime. It's not something that, that we can really control. Mm-hmm. What, what is the men's view on this t- particular topic? Okay, just, uh, just a disclaimer, I do not speak for all men. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. I guess it's a, for men the, for men there's also the f- it's not, it's also, there's also the fear of of emasculation I guess I mean you hear it in w- war torn countries where there are men who who have been raped as well and those those who survive the experience tend to be really um, well I guess traumatized would be the best word for it yeah but 
I mean, any of us would be, but it's just, it's not just uh, about the, you know, you've, you've just, you know, you haven't just been physically violated. It's also your psychological and you sort of, uh, I guess, lo- in an, just to put it bluntly, l- sort of lose your manliness, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it's um, it's a double blow to, uh, double blow to uh, your self-esteem, y- y- the way you view yourself, your pride, that kind of thing, you know. So usually men would not report on cases where men are being raped. Highly unlikely, no. Even for women, uh, I got a stat from WCC Penang where it stated that on average, 3,000 women are raped in Malaysia every year. However, they estimated that only 2 out of 10 rapes are actually reported. Shame and fear prevents many victims from going to the police. So let's say you know like, this year, I mean, I mean, this month, you know, like probably around two people uh, got raped in, in the area that you live. But in actuality, 10 people got it because 80% of the women, usually they won't report it. Yep. Whereas men, the same thing as well, I think. Would because be. they know what the public will say eventually. Mm-hmm. They will blame on the victims or they were afraid of themselves, mm-hmm. you know, being uh, feeling shameful what happened to them. What is the culture in South Korea for the victims of rape, I I know in Malaysia there are cases where the 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 family, uh, in order for them to not being f- not feel shame, they actually marry marries off their child to or you know their daughter to the rapist himself. Oh. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty new, but then uh, we do raise our voices about ha- that that happens. We do report to the police station mm-hmm. and also blame the government as well. That's when the government have come. It's been a while already uh, with a sort of new solution, uh, installing CCTV, mm-hmm. just to make sure that uh, people can feel safe. I think it's interesting that you brought that up because uh, if you watch some Tamil movies, uh, when the girl gets raped, if the guy actually comes and marry you, he doesn't have to go to jail and you're considered lucky. That is the... uh, the interesting part about that, that actually, if the girl ever refuses, everyone will be like, are you crazy? This guy is willing to marry you. Like, hello, he raped me in the first place. But that it doesn't register for them that way. They will just uh, tell you that you're lucky enough that that he's willing to marry you. So just say yes and get it done and over but with. But wouldn't that lead the wrong message to... It does, to, yeah. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. It It is definitely not the way to solution, exactly. uh, solve the problem. But yeah. I think that's because I think there's a... There's a view that women who have been raped are sort of, you know, in a way like damaged, damaged goods. goods. So it's kind of like, you know, you're lucky that someone still wants you. That kind of thing, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah, they put too much too much emphasis on the purity of your yeah. virginity, I guess. Mm. So when you are being raped, meaning that you don't have, you are not a virgin anymore, and the only way for you to redeem that back is to marry the perpetrator himself. Mm. Uh, in fact, I, I got a, an article here by The Telegraph stated that nearly a quarter of men in some ASEAN Asian countries admit to rape. So, in actuality, it, it, the culture here is a lot of men don't see rape as a crime and partly, you know, through you know the porn industry and then the film industry, but also partly it's because the culture of ASEAN society do not prosecute men who did it. They, to them, it's like the, the fault is always on the woman. For the men, you know, they, they are just being men. That's it. Like, they excuse men because the, their supposed biological, biological needs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, maybe final comments by everyone on the issue of rape. Uh, to me, it's definitely something that is a huge no. Like I, I don't think uh, rape sh- uh, no- nothing should justify rape. Uh, I think that we should uh, definitely stop blaming the victims. I mean, not we as in the four of us, but the entire country <laughs> and also the ASEAN region. Uh, stop blaming the women. It's never the women's fault. Uh, whatever happens, always go back to the source and solve the problem from there, and not just uh, go for the shortcut solution, which is to tell the, the women to you know dress dress modestly and, and don't walk alone and all that. I guess, yeah. So, um, rape is wrong, full stop, and the fault lies with the perpetrator, full stop. And there's no room for argument on that. I agree with all of you, and let's educate people properly. Yeah, and they lead them in a better, better way to prevent all this from the start. So that's all uh, from us on Blast from the Grassroot. We will continue back with ABC Dialogue on Independence Day of Malaysia. <laughs>